Hey. Hey there. I'm so sorry. Are you Brent McCann? Yes. I'm so sorry I'm running late today. I'm Dan Lieberman. Hi. Pleasure to meet you. I've Thanks enjoyed sir. your show. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. What's going on with you? Well, um, I started having some sciatic problems about oh, summer of 2021. It first started kind of in my uh, the outside of my right calf. And uh, I just assumed it was like a strained muscle or something like that. And then later in the fall, uh, I had a more severe pain issue after like a kayaking trip. Lots I'm sorry, what the this last fall? This is 2022? Uh, 2021, 2021. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. <clears throat> and so I went to a friend of mine who's a chiropractor to get some treatment and, and also had some PT and wasn't really responding that well. So I had an MRI, which I think you have. I do. Which led to a consultation with a surgeon. Uh, and then I had uh, three interlaminar epidurals, uh, December of 21, followed by two more in March and June. And I haven't done anything since then other than some PT. Okay. And you know, is the pain I'm maybe 75% of the way back? You know, I still still have pain issues, especially in the morning. I'll uh, get a hot shower and do some stretching and then I can, you know, walk. I mean, I, I've been able to like hike and, you know, walk 18 holes of golf, but I still have these pain issues. It's been kind of a slow process. Yeah, it stinks, doesn't so, it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, let, can I ask you a few clarifying questions about the pain? Sure. Um, you said it's in the leg. Is it on the outer part of the thigh? Yeah, it starts in my right hip and then it almost bypasses my thigh and goes right to the calf, the outer calf. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah well, um, I'm going to tell you some... Is there anything else I need to know or are you ready to look at the MRI? Very interesting. I just did a video called the number one mistake most people with back pain make. And that's what's going on with you. So I'm I'm so excited to have you on this uh, show today. You haven't had any treatment for what's actually wrong. And okay. so if it's okay, I'd like to show you that. Sure. Um, I'm gonna share the uh, screen, my screen with you. So we're gonna be looking at your MRI. Do you see it here? Yes. Okay, so this is your uh, uh, middle of your back. This is if you put your hand on your back and put it all the way around, this is where your thumb would be right here, where the green line is right there. Right. This goes up toward your head and this goes down toward your bum. These are the discs of your spine here. That's a disc. And then this is the spinal canal. And thanks, mom and dad. We've got a beautiful, wide, open spinal canal. Mostly good discs, except for this one, which is bulging out. Right. And this is why they t diagnosed you with a herniated disc and had you get an MRI. Um, this, if we went perpendicular to the spine, we would get this. And let me uh, just change the view here for a second to this guy. This is your back um, in a cross section. And uh, I wanna show you something. This right here is the lamina. See this gray area? Yeah. And then this is your facet joint. See it there? Right. And then this is the foramen, the hole that the nerve root comes out of. I just want you to focus on the facet joint, this little area. Right. And what I, what I want to point out, try to blaze this in your mind. The middle of the facet joint is dark. Okay. Now we're going to go a level down. And here's the facet joint at L5S1. Here's the left side, and the middle of the facet joint is dark. But on the right side... 
the middle of the facet joint is white line. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? Yes. That white line is your problem, I think. That white line is an inflamed facet joint at L5 S1. Is it if it's okay? If you don't have any questions, you have questions about the MRI. Um. Well, I can share with you what I was told when I was first reviewed. Yeah. Okay. I mean, he showed me a side view of the the and I guess the the foraminal opening. Yeah and said that he thought that there was stenosis there. There is. There yeah. is. But having said that, the pain you're having, mostly back pain that goes into the butt, uh, burns in the, feels like it's in your hip and burns in your outer thigh, and in your case, even goes into the calf. That right. is classic facet joint pain, not nerve root pain. There's no nerve root that goes on the outer thigh. There's only a nerve. The lateral oh, okay. femoral. So it, you, the kind of pain, look, you know, look at us. We're not, we got arthritic joints all over our body. If you scanned everywhere, these are not the bodies that we started out with. Right. So you're going to see all kinds of stuff. The thing right. with the spine is, and everything, honestly, is you really got to match up what you're feeling with what you see on the scan and mm -hmm. that facet joint is a pretty classic you got a swollen facet joint and you got pain that feels like facet pain you've also got a narrowed foramen but you don't have classic nerve root pain so most likely not not certainly for sure but most likely you got facet pain and the treatment for that is not epidural injection it epidural did help, though of course it helps. <laughs> it helps everything. Like um, you could, I mean, the most common use of epidural injection is having a baby. Right. But but having an epidural injection is doesn't get rid of that pain. Having the baby does, right? It so right. it blocks pain no matter what's causing it for a while. Also, you had interlaminar epidural injection, which is very, very old fashioned. Almost no one does that anymore. So I'm thinking you're getting a traditional kind of treatment, which may not be the best treatment available for what's actually wrong with you. And by the way, it's working. <laughs> so, so good. Thank God. Right. Good. But having said that, um, more commonly today, you would be a good candidate for medial branch block radiofrequency ablation. Have you ever had medial branch blocks? So these are, they go in and, uh, I'm going to show you a model. I don't know. And if I if we zoom in, this is the facet joint that hurts your L5 S1. There's a pain fiber that comes into that joint. And just like when you have a root canal, they will uh, they will destroy the nerve that goes to the tooth to make the tooth stop hurting. Right. The approach of radiofrequency ablation is to burn the nerve that goes to the joint to make the joint stop hurting and it works really well but it's temporary so it works right. really well for about 10 months and about 60 percent of the people because it's hit or miss they don't want to just go in there and start buzzing your nerves so they go in and do a test and the test is called medial branch block people have that block and they're like it didn't work the pain went away for four hours then it came back no it did work that's that's the test right right if you have the injection and the pain doesn't go away, that's a negative block and it's not working. But if you have the block and it goes away, then you're a good candidate. So what you need is, is a pain management doctor who can do the radiofrequency ablation. And I don't think that's the person you've been seeing. If Have you seen a pain management doctor or did you? Yes, yes. Okay. I don't think that, that you've got the right one for this approach because they did an interlaminar epidural and didn't move you on to this other this other thing. Where do, where do you live? Spokane. Oh, so you got a lot of options. I mean, I, I think I would recommend if you're very comfortable with your pain management doctor, you can discuss this with them and see if they want to do it. If it were me, I would try somebody else. Um, nothing against your doctor, but there's horses for courses and um, you may be, you may need a different horse for a different course.
Got it. This is not, you know, people are often, you know, women won't even change their hairdressers. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's not, it's not like that. Is this, if, if I'm a doctor and the approach I'm taking works for my patients, but it's not working for you, I want you to see somebody else to, to try a different, it's, it's not about the doctor. It's a hundred percent about you and what works for you. And so I, you know, people often feel kind of weird about this stuff. And that's why if, and if you do nothing wrong with that, you can go talk to this pain management doctor. But for me, you got the wrong horse for your course. And I would, I would think about trying a different one. And I would, if you go to a new one and they say, okay, let's start by repeating the epidural injections. No. Okay. Uh, also wrong. Here I am. I'm not even a pain management doctor calling them the expert wrong, but I believe that would be the wrong. Uh, or I could come down here and I'm in Phoenix now, so I could come down here and go to a clinic here too. Oh yeah. You could go see, uh, if you want, you can call us, uh, 602-256-2525. Uh, Best Practice Health can fix you up with a pain management doctor. If you're here now, who I know would be, would be a, a good one. Um, Dr. Ann Shree Fox, I'm very, I have a close relationship with. I, I have 100% confidence and trust in her. Now, these ablations, they only last for about a year and then you need another one. Is that how it works? Yeah. Well, it depends on, so the the effect is only good for an average of 10 months. and um, But a lot of people get active again and then they can exercise the pain away or they can get the right combination of anti-inflammatory diet, anti-inflammatory medications, activity. You kind of got to got to find that that rail that you can okay. ride on. So, you know, there's a lot of I'm there's a lot of ways get to over it. this with a certain a different focus on my PT. Right? No. Yeah. Um yeah. no. Okay. Probably not not if you've already had PT. PT is definitely important and helps. Yeah. But if you've had more than 3 weeks of it, then uh that's it's not likely to there's no magical therapist or, you know, um, I have had better luck. Once you do your three weeks of PT, sometimes you can find the right trainer and get into the right sport or weight or other combination that gets rid of it. It's it's basically low-grade arthritis. And, um, you know, it's uh, there's a lot of ways to get rid of it. But extended PT is not one of them. So I was told I needed an L4, L5 fusion. No. <laughs> which is why I haven't done anything. <laughs> well, you were, you were definitely right about that. You don't, you do not, um, you know, I would never, there's, there's different doctors can differ, disagree based on how they view things. But to me, the indications for fusion are spondylolisthesis with stenosis, sometimes in rare cases of degenerative disc disease with severe modic changes, that's something to consider. Um, I would not recognize anything you have as an indication for surgery. Wow. Well, I'm glad we talked. Me too. Me too. By the way, the surgery would work, but it's like it's like tapping in. Uh, the spinal fusion surgery would fuse that joint and the pain would go away, but it's like tapping in a paper clip with a sledgehammer. You don't need a sledgehammer to, you know, and then also you're inducing adjacent level issues 17 percent of the time you need another fusion no like that's that that would not be a pro in my in my playbook that's not a play we would recognize wow and uh, artificial disc replacement in the lower lumbar isn't advanced enough yet well it's also not your problem yeah. you don't have this you don't have low back pain coming from a you, you know you you haven't had the really, really basic non-invasive treatment. So to skip to these really invasive high-risk things that involve weakening your spine and other problems is is to me not not on yeah. the menu. Not on the menu. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. I feel a lot better. <laughs> I mean, my pain's still there, but I feel mentally better about my situation. <laughs> well, you're safe. Hit the gym, see what works for you. If you want to try another pain doctor, we can hook you up with somebody, but uh, do not have fusion. Uh, my, my strong yeah. recommendation would be against that surgery. Awesome. All right. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. You have a great day. Okay. All right. Uh, oh, interesting.
Interesting, interesting. Well, we are over time, but we've got one more guy who I want to get to, and that's Mr. Dean. Let's see if I can bring him in. 